Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome to a, a new thing I've been re I've been wanting to do a reaction to for a while, and you know this is actually kind of more intertwined with the with the channel than I uh, initially would appear. So this is the Psychology of Psychonauts: Oleander's Basic Braining by Gaming University. So the thing is, I caught like a glimpse of one of Gaming University's. Uh, videos uh, talking about like the psychology of like the levels you go through in Psychonauts 2 like one of them I think it was like one of Ford's fragments I can't remember which one at the moment it was seeing that that made me want to play Psychonauts 2 which um, wanted to play Psychonauts 2 I thought I should probably play Psychonauts 1 first so I actually know what's happening since I'm able to so I guess you can say that uh, Gaming University is the reason for two series on my channel yay uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm gonna start with this one. If it, uh, like, if people like it, I'll continue, like, reacting to the rest of them. And hopefully my Psychonauts 2 playthrough should be done by the time I actually get the Psychonauts 2 in the, uh, in this playlist. Uh, because, so that the way I don't get spoiled on anything. Going back to Psychonauts and, like, you know, the, the psychology of Psychonauts. I know for all, like, oh, how humorous and funny Psychonauts can be, well, can be and is. Like, I know that there actually is, you know, some thought behind how they depict things in people's heads. I mean, there's a reason why they put that warning up at the beginning of the game, talking about, you know, the psychology and all that sort of stuff. Grant, it's been a while since I played Psychonauts 1. Um, unfortunately, it does not have, uh, not, uh, it does not have, like, the time where you can play around in all the levels after you beat the game. Um, so, it, to get all of this stuff, basically, from what I figured out, there's actually a cheat you can put in to unlock all powers and abilities and max them out, so I might have to do that if I want to do, like, a 100% completionist of the game, so, uh, yeah, that, we'll have to see that. But, yeah, I guess with all that out of the way, of course, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my let's play of the day, and with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Duh, I mean... Oh, like an actual college le university lecture. Upon entering Oleander's mind, Raz finds himself in a recruiting office with Elton. This is understandable, considering Oleander's militaristic personality traits. He perceives that training the kids at Whispering Rock is similar to recruiting them for war. His speech at the start of the game further elaborates this perspective. After punching the projection, Raz is thrust forth into a war zone. The coach has crafted yeah, an obstacle brings back memories. in his mind using images that make the students feel as though they are in the middle of a battle. Oleander's mindscape is characterized by combat knives sticking out of the ground, ammo belts that act as shrubs, missiles about to go off, and set pieces taken directly from battles. Below the missile, Lily is investigating a meat flower with her herbophony, stating it has been showing up in these nightmares she has been having. Lily's specialty is the ability to communicate with plants, as detailed on her Campster account. Campster After what? After parachuting down from a plane, the coach brings Raz's attention to a mental vault. The uh... mind creates this to I'm sorry, wait, Campster? What is that? Wait, Campster is a small promotional website previously hosted on uh, on the Double Find Production official website, modeled after uh, a, f a social network website. Campster is an actual in-universe website used by the children attending Whispering Rock Psychic Summer Camp to keep in touch. Not unlike uh, the analog bulletin boards that appeared in the game proper. The site is notable for including a great deal of supplemental information not in the actual game, including the character's hometowns, backstories, and interests. Uh, content on the website was a uh, was originally hosted on real life website Friendster. Yeah, that's another one I've never heard of, and was ported over to another real uh, life website known as uh, as MySpace. Yeah, a real life website known as MySpace. What is Friendster? Is that something even older than MySpace? Sorry, I'm going down this hole. Uh, this like hole here. Friendster was a social network uh, launched in 2003 after the company became social media site. Before Friendster was redesigned, the service closed as a social gaming site on as a company. Oh, so they okay, yeah, so they're gone. Yeah, again, that's something I'd never heard of. 
Um, no, back to Campster. Uh, unfortunately, due to complications with these websites, functions, and policies, not to mention their increase, uh, decreasing relevance, the content of the characters' individual pages uh, became more difficult to view over time. Years later, Tim Schafer and his team at Double Fine created their own site to host uh, the pages giving them more creative and legal control over them. Due to Double Fine's website going offline for rebuilding as of February 10th, 2020, Campster is no longer available at its original length, but is still accessible via Internet Archive Wayback Machine. Okay. So we got a little bit of an ARG going on here. Safeguard secrets and other formative memories from the individual's life. This one shows heroic events from Oleander's military career. From there, yeah, we where his legs are like three times their normal length. A naval battle, minefields, and other war-related scenes. By the time Raz completes the obstacle course, he finds a side path leading to a white room with schematics. The ornamental trim in this room depicts white bunnies along the floor and ceiling. I before he wait, it anything, did the coach for. I never noticed that before and gives him a merit badge for passing the basic braining course. This is all we learned during our initial visit through Morso Oleander's mind. Largely, the figments in basic braining are war-related as well. These would be combat knives, bombs, soldiers, and barricades. There are some figments that are amiss from this theme, however. These would be chickens with army helmets, as well as meat cleavers. From here, we have a reoccurring theme with the meat flowers and meat cleavers in this mindscape. Yeah, a lot of meat. So what did we learn about the man? On face value, we learn he is a military veteran, scarred by battle and the loss of fellow soldiers. The trouble oh is, my God. this Wait a second. is entirely manufactured and false. In the latter half of the level- I just noticed, and I don't think I- I never noticed this before. Like, look at his eyes. Only his one eye actually moved. I never realized, well, it's a fake eye. Like, but like, I never noticed that it was like actually, because it doesn't move soldiers. with the other one. Oh my God, the I never noticed is, that before. This persona is entirely manufactured and false. In the latter half of the level, we find a vault that is stuck behind some mental cobwebs. The player doesn't have access to its contents until much later in the game. When we do, we look into a vault called Oleander's, Oleander's Shame. Shame. Yeah, I remember this one. It turns one. out that Marceau was never accepted into any branch of the military due to his short stature. Every one of them kicked him out, which built up a sense of resentment in the man. If we look back to the first vault, entitled Oleander's Pride, he imagines himself as having longer legs and other features. <laughs> the memory the coach brings our attention to is a glorified fantasy of his, one portraying him Actually, thinking about, I think I remember, uh, like back then, I I made the I made the observation that you know his legs are were a lot longer than they actually were, and I I think I compared him to like Cotton Hill from King of the Hill, where he had his knees blown out, so they so the doctor stitched his shins to his thigh bone, so he just kind of waddled everywhere. As the person he imagines he should have been. In order to understand Coach Oleander in the basic braining level, we will have to look at a mental exercise called the Jahari Window. Developed by Joseph Luft and Harry Ingham in 1955, it is a method that helps to better understand the psyche of yourself and others you meet. The premise is that there are four windows within the Jahari house that represents four categories of how others perceive us and we see ourselves. Okay. These can be things like emotions, character traits, or behaviors. The first is called the arena. It is represented by aspects of our personal self that is known to ourselves and known to others. For example, a concert pianist knows that they are a talented musician, and everyone who sees this individual perform Where your heart knows your sleeves, well. okay, yeah. The second window is called the blind spot. This is where others see something in you that you cannot see yourself. An example of this is that you have a high opinion of yourself, and everyone sees you as a terrible person. <laughs> or conversely, you have a negative opinion of yourself, and others see you as a wonderful person. The third category is the mask. This is where there is something that you know about yourself and no one else does. This is generally some aspect of a personality or history that we do not want others to know. It can we be all as simple have secrets, as having a crush yeah. on someone but are too shy to say, or having something shameful in our past we want to keep hidden. 
Whether for selfish or benevolent reasons, we all keep secrets from each other. As more of our self is attributed to this window, our mask becomes more defined until people are unable to see the real you. The final window crush on someone but are too shy to say, <coughs> or having something shameful in our past we want to keep hidden. Whether for selfish or benevolent reasons, we all keep secrets from each other. Like, isn't that sort of, that's sort of similar to what Cassie was saying in the, in the next game, where, like, you never show, like, you never show your true self to everybody. Every person you meet or every group of people you meet, you're, 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 you're showing off a slightly moderated version of yourself. And at that point, can you ever have, is there ever really like a true, like, your, is there ever like a true s a version of yourself if you're constantly moderating yourself with everybody. As more of our self is attributed to this window, our mask becomes more defined until people are unable to see the real you. The final and that's where Oleander comes in. Unknown. This is something that you do not know about yourself, and others do not know about you either. This section covers mostly unconscious characteristics of ourselves that no one knows. Until it is drawn out of us, it will remain unknown to everyone. Yeah. From what we have seen in basic braining, Coach Oleander's third window, the mask, is the largest. <laughs> the mindscape he crafted for the campers to practice is 100% fabricated to portray himself as a hardened war veteran. Marceau never served in the military and instead created a false persona that he displayed to the world. However, there are aspects Which actually of his thinking about it. that poke through. As you may have noticed, his psyche seems to be like. If he never actually served in the military, how did he get that scar and how did he lose his eye? Like, I'm just, I'm just realizing that now. Like, what happened there? Was that just like, like an accident from one of his like previous psychic tank experiments or something? Or one of his like weapons experiments? Like, where did that, uh, what happened there? His psyche seems to be fixated on meat. Much like a daisy growing through a crack in the concrete, a meat flower literally sprouts from his much like a daisy. As you may have noticed, his psyche seems to be fixated on meat. Much like a daisy growing through a crack in the concrete, a meat flower literally sprouts from his unconscious mind into the rest of his masked reality. Figments yeah. showing meat cleavers can be seen throughout the level. And there's lots of bunnies! Once Raz learns the clairvoyance ability, he can return to the field of bunnies and learn how they perceive the young psychic. They see him as a hulking figure brandishing a bloody knife. I will not go into further detail Did I ever on do this that? I forget. theme as the root of Oleander's trauma will be handled in a separate video. The second crack in this manufactured mindscape is the white room Raz uncovered at the end. More so did not intend any of the campers to make it to the end, so he didn't put up any defenses in that area. <laughs> Upon revisiting, the metal door to that room is closed and chains keep it safe from further intrusion. In conclusion, we learned that the self-image of the perfect soldier that Oleander has created for himself is was proven fake. to not align with reality, and his height is the cause of it. Incongruence is when reality and our self-image are not compatible. If the difference is small, we generally ignore it or rationalize it away so our self-image remains intact. However, when a life-changing event occurs, such as being rejected by every branch of the military, we are thrown into psychological turmoil. To quote from a paper called Self-Image Incongruence Theory of Individual Health by Dennis Rancourt, when such events occur that cause incongruence between self-image and reality, there is a primal psychometabolic reaction, there is stress, and yeah, the individual's I... primary task becomes to resolve the micro or macro identity crisis. In order to do this, there are three paths we can take. One, to accept a difficult truth about ourselves accept that changes our self-image self to be more in line with reality. Two, to take proactive steps to improve ourselves and allow reality to be closer to our self-image. Or three, to do neither, which allows the psychological symptoms of incongruence to worsen. This can lead to the individual growing angry with that which they consider to be responsible for reality not being how they want it to be. Which, I mean, thinking about it, I mean, for Oleander... <sighs> I mean, especially, but I mean, with, like, how his, how his childhood was, I mean, 
realistically, I think the best thing he could have done was, you know, accept his true self a long time ago. I mean, he couldn't improve himself. I mean, if the main a thing for him not going to the military was his height, I mean, I know there are surgeries where, you know, you can get your head, your, uh, you can, like, get your legs lengthened to be a little taller, which is just creepy. But, like, that's extremely painful and very dangerous from what I've heard. And also, given my, you know, un my unsureness of what time period the games actually takes place in, um, you, the medical technology might also just not be there to do that operation itself. So, yeah. This anger can be directed towards a specific individual or the world itself. Yeah, the world, I can it definitely see that. It is difficult to look into the unknown portion of our Jahari window and accept a painful truth about ourselves. In the same manner, it can be difficult to recognize something in our lives needs to change and take steps to realize this. It's easier to blame something outside of yourself and resent it. Yeah, Oleander unfortunately. The fact that due to his height, he would never be the perfect soldier he desired to be. Instead, he grew angry at those who denied him, angry at anyone taller than him since they reminded him of the reason for his incongruence. Fueled by his resentment, more so Oleander chose an unhealthy method of changing himself into his ideal self-image. The diagrams in the White Room were the details of his plan to steal the brains of the campers and psychonauts, to use them to power an army of psychic tanks so that he could conquer the world. In this <laughs> yeah, manner, he would be able to that. force the world to allow his self-image of the perfect soldier to become reality. This would relieve the incongruence he has been experiencing for most of his life, and allow his anger and depression to finally be alleviated. Yeah, I mean, that's one way. I mean, if you're angry at the military not letting you in, just make your own military with blackjack and hookers. However, in the process, he would destroy the lives of countless others in order to resolve his personal identity crisis. Wait, the Jeep was his, of course. Oh god, yeah, that was a wonderful first little step. I'm gonna be... Granted, I mean, like, I'm gonna be watching the rest of these nonetheless, but depending on how this video does, I'll see whether I watch them, you know, in my private time or if I do reactions to them. But, oh god, this is... Uh, this, I'm gonna have so much fun watching all of these. So, yeah, I mean, of course, as always, original videos linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will lead to my Let's Play of the Day. And you know what? I'll also link to my Psychonauts, you know, playthrough just as well. So yeah, with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.